In this video, I am going to share with you guys my haircut nightmare in China and how to try to prevent this from happening to you guys. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am finally ready to talk to you guys about my January haircut nightmare here in China. I just got a haircut yesterday. I think it looks okay. I just realized when I straighten it, kind of like the downer part here is longer than the upper part. But yeah, let's just ignore that, okay? <laughs> it was cheap. <laughs> Anyway, so without further ado, uh, let's get into this little video, shall we? During the years I've been here in China, my foreign friends and I have been discussing quite often the situation in the hair salon here in China. <laughs> First, one thing I was wondering is why all Chinese hairdressers are men. But yeah, maybe you can answer this below. I don't get it, but I have only gotten haircuts by men. I've never seen a girl in a hair salon. So when we're talking about hairdressers in China, it's usually quite a negative loaded discussion because a lot of people have had their own kind of nightmares in hair salons here. <laughs> so today I'm going to share with you guys my own experience at the Chinese hair salon and I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to survive a hair salon in China if you're staying here for a longer time and you want a cheap haircut or just a haircut then I hope this is useful for you. Okay, so let's go back to January. So in January, I had spent all my money on presents for my family and friends at home for Christmas. I had just gotten back to China and I was like, oh my God, half a year passed again. I haven't cut my hair, I need to go and do it. I did it one evening and I was really tired that evening when I went. So that's the first tip, don't go to the hairdresser when you're tired. <laughs> when I went to the hairdresser, he was very busy and I was waiting an hour before it was my turn and it was just before closing time I guess so I was just like can you just cut my hair and he was like yeah cool so I put away my glasses I like I sat back and then I was just like okay yeah <laughs> when I opened my eyes again and put on my glasses I realized that suddenly I could see my ears oh my god I was like what you cut it up to here? I've never seen my ears this much. Like, ah, I don't want to see my ears like that. It's too much. What's done is done. I couldn't really do anything about it. I just kind of like paid and left and I went back to my room and I was like, okay, so I guess I don't have much hair anymore next time you have to be more uh, careful <laughs> yeah that was like my nightmare story like this year I've tried it before where I wanted to be blonde and then they would color it and then afterwards I'll be like this is not blonde this is like light brown still it kind of it didn't change much from my actual color at that time but I still had to pay and I was like oh, okay whatever <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is that I don't care that much about my hair I of course like my hair but it's not the most important thing I'm not like one of those girls who are like oh my god only the specialist can touch my hair I'm more like you know they cut a little bit it's cheap it's nice and then I just move on with my life and if it's too short or not super straight then I'll just go and get a new haircut at some point and my hair will come back so it's not a big deal for me but I gotta say I'm now a little more careful because after January I was like I don't want to have such short hair I look like Mm, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so because I was traumatized by that experience, I went on with my life and I never walked back into a hair salon again. <laughs> well, I was actually thinking about going to a hair salon in Denmark, but then I saw the prices and I was like, <laughs> whoa, no, whatever, I'll go back to China and then I'll get a haircut there anyways. It will be fine. So yesterday I was walking around campus and I was like looking for a hair salon and I was like, oh, I can't find one. 
one. I only know the one that I went to last time where it didn't go really well. <laughs> but because I was too lazy, I went in there anyways. And luckily this time it was another dude. It was a very young dude. He was only 21 and he had been working there for four years, but I think it was all self-taught. Anyways, I sat down and I was like, please, jian wo de tofa. And... He was like, cool, I'll do that. And then I said, 只要一点点点, And that's one of the next tips, guys. When you are talking to a hairdresser, remember to always say 一点点点. So 一点 just means a little bit. And then I just emphasize it by saying it a million times. And like really show him this. Also, if you're not great at Chinese, just be like, mm, And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I know my guy, he was just like, ,这个可以吗? And then I would be like, mm, 可以, 可以. So look at his fingers, what is he doing? And then what are you doing? So we were kind of on the same page from the beginning. So I took off my glasses once again, and I let him cut my hair. <clears throat> and as I said, it's not super straight on this side, but then again, it's a haircut. <laughs> And I think it looks okay. So I guess your question is, Ling Ling, what do you mean? Can I not go to the hairdresser in China? Should I leave alone all the hair salons? No, of course not. It obviously depends on your requirements, what you want to get out of the experience. I would say that if you are very like protective about your hair, then I would go to a more expensive one. In China, there are so many different hair salons so they're like super expensive where you get what you pay for sometimes a little overpriced I guess and then there are like the mid-range it's like between like for me 35 RMB up to like 500 RMB for a haircut and then if you want to do it real cheap <laughs> get a real good Chinese experience out of it you should go to the streets actually outside of my campers there are a few people cutting hair they're just on the street with a little mirror and then you just sit down there and I don't know I guess you pay like five or ten RMB I did that in the hutongs once before and it went fine like my hair looked pretty fine afterwards and actually I got it for free because a guy he came by and he was like oh take a picture with me and I was like okay and then because we took a picture together he promised to pay so literally five RMB wow I saved money woo <laughs> you can definitely go to the hair salon in China just remember to learn a few words beforehand so I don't even think that you need to learn that many it's just good to know like bao liu chang fa like you want to leave the long hair or like like you want to keep your long hair just keep an eye on your hairdresser okay and then remember just like yi dian dian so they will understand they should only cut it yi dian dian and then of course you should probably learn the word for hair cutting jian tou fa oh one more tip guys if you want to dye your hair blonde and like you're naturally darker i would not go for a chinese like mid-sized hair salon i would either go for like a really professional one like a more high-end one or I would just buy it and do it myself or do it at home I know that in Beijing and some of the other big cities there are like hair salons where foreigners get their hair done so that's much better you could ask friends ask around to see if anyone has any recommendations because I wouldn't go to a Chinese hair salon and do it just because the hair color is made for Chinese hair what I usually do is I just buy from home and bring it and do it myself or if I really want to go blonde then I'll go back and do it or ask friends for recommendations here in Beijing, Shanghai, those big cities. I wouldn't trust it in smaller cities. I did it in Xianyang before. It was okay because I dyed it like darker than my actual hair color but like they put so much hair color in my hair. It took literally like two seconds before I was super dark and they were like whoa oh my god what happened because obviously they were used to Chinese hair so they just went all in and then my hair was like traumatized no not really but still <laughs> so anyways guys I just want to say yes of course you can go to the hair salon in China just learn a few words beforehand and maybe even bring a Chinese friend if you're not comfortable with it if you're protective about your hair just go to a more expensive one if you just want a simple cheap haircut go for the cheaper one but maybe stay away from the street one unless you're like you're really really adventurous <laughs> So 
that was all for today's video. I hope you liked my little story time slash tips and tricks for going to the Chinese hair salon. This is some of my experience. I've done it many times before and I quite like it. You get what you pay for. Also, I have another thing I just need to say before I finish this video. I signed up as being a local tour guide on a website called showaround.com. You should check that out. So if you're going to Beijing and you need a companion slash tour guide slash cool friend then you should come to Ling Ling book me so we can go together I'll show you all the cool places here in Beijing if you have anything you want to do you should just tell me and we could do it together I think it could be so much fun also please follow me on social media Lena around on Facebook Lena around on Instagram <laughs> and check out my patreon if you feel like it thank you for watching I hope you're having a great day evening wherever you're in the world and I'll see you again very very soon Ling Ling's out see you and bye bye